This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook. The Lone Watchtower. Some ages in later years claimed a secret key to it. They spoke to those they deemed worthy of another watchtower. At first, they said, erected in a realm long forgotten and unreachable from this side of the abyss. Only a very rare few can find their way there by strange astral paths and carve their name into that mysterious tower's foundation. What powers this watchtower sends to its mages are unknown, for any whose name is written there do not reveal its secrets. Modern magical orders have many legends and theories about the Lone Watchtower, but no evidence of its existence has ever appeared for public scrutiny. Mastery Play About the mystical foundation of Atlantis, mortals can no longer willingly choose to set out on soul journeys to attain the realm's, realm's supernal. Only those who were already mages could reach the new watchtowers, and even then the journeys were hard and not all returned. But awakenings were not denied to sleepers. By oracular magic, miracle, happenstance, divine grace, or sheer luck, a mortal soul could stir and find itself at the gate of a watchtower. If his will was strong enough, he could carve his name into the tower's stone and so secure for himself mystical sympathy with the watchtower and its realm. He would return awakened, charged by his sojourn in a strange land. As time passed in the abyss white, the journeys of the soul grew fewer, but awakening still occurred. Sometimes the soul would not walk the astral paths during its trials, but instead perceive the external world through supernal vision, causing the mind to think it had gone mad, beset by hallucinations and devilry. Ordinary people and things became like actors taking the role of supernal entities and acting a mystery play for the soul's benefit. Those who could guess the plot of the play and take their proper role within it were graced with awakening. Those who failed to anticipate the script or refused to take part soon returned to sleep. Their trial reduced to a memorable nightmare, no more significant than any other dream. The actors recruited for such mystery plays were unaware of their parts. Only the awakening could read the cipher of experience and discern the truth of what occurred. Everyone else went about their lives normally, unaware what they had been habits of a divine. Or did mages merely project onto their altered perceptions? Was it all in the subject's mind? Regardless, those who passed the trials of the soul could make what was in their minds real, and so the question was moved. Where the Atlanteans could willfully enter the soul journey of awakening in the dragon's tomb, mortals in the fallen world awakened only by strange happenstance and causes for which are still debated by mages in the modern age. If only mages could know just who would awaken and how and when they could more easily bolster their numbers and work to ensure the awakening of humanity. But there seem to be no such laws or guidance or guidelines. Even mages, masters of the miraculous, had to rely on rare miracles to maintain their lineage. The Hidden Hands Behind History The excerpts, the pretender guides, 
were largely forgotten. If they still exist, they remain unseen. They acted upon the world. They did so in ways that could be interpreted as the works of nature, or the whims of fate, or eventually as random chance or natural law. No one remembered that their own kind had once become gods. No one that is the mages. The balls of the awakened handled, handed down their secrets to a select few, ensuring that their methods of casting the old magics remain true. They, of all people, suspected that the Exarchs still ruled in heaven. But they did not rule unopposed. The oracles also existed in the celestial reaches, working to foil the selfish dictates of the first pretenders. Once in a long age, it is said, a mortal mage's soul may attain the final key to the mysteries and ascend across the abyss to the supernal world and so become an oracle or exarch and impose his own will on the workings of the universe. Mages who had survived the fall of Atlantis clung to the ways of the lost city with a religious fervor, surrounded by sleeping souls who could not remember any of the truths told them by the awakened. The enlightened were forced to keep the magical tradition secret, to teach them to only those who proved they could accept the precious knowledge. Caretakers of the mysteries, sorcerers, swore to keep magic from the sight and misuse of the sleeping. The Atlantean orders codified their stages and degrees of initiation to ensure that only proper initiates were given access to the arcana, the ways of magic. Mages divide terrible punishments for those who would reveal the mysteries to uninitiated sleepers. In the chaos of the escape from the ruins of the island, the Atlantean orders spread in all directions, finding new ports in nearly every part of the populated world. Sundered from one another, their once unified philosophy splintered and each order's goals became exalted over the others. Where before each order served a purpose balanced by the other orders, playing one part in a whole, they all now tried to subsume the roles of the orders into their own hierarchies each seeing itself as the center of soul weave in the great pattern. Once sundered, each order bereft of the proximity of fellows came to view itself as the soul path to magic. Initiation soon became more than just a method of protecting secrets and hiding lore from unprepared eyes. It became a means of weeding out the undeserving and venerating the gifted. Many ancient high civilizations were influenced by the Atlantean exiles. Vedic India, ancient Egypt, the Mayans, their monuments, their monumental artifacts such as the pyramids are said to still hide Atlantean secret codes indecipherable in full even by their heirs who hold the pieces of the puzzle. In many places and many times mages tried to recreate lost Atlantis to guide the minds of sleepers in erecting civilizations that sought to reclaim the ancient ways. Each attempt failed. Sleepers were creatures of urges, ruled by whims and unconscious yearning. They had not the discipline or will to long keep what was good, just, and beautiful. In the end, their civilizations each descended into decadence and decay. 
These ultimately ends were unfortunately helped along by mages who could not master their own souls. We sought to use sleeper institutions as a means to their own aggrandizement or power. Ever cautious to keep the secrets and display of their power away from the masses, these wizards nonetheless fought with one another in the shadows, battling over the courses of empires, the legacy of Atlantis' own failure also haunted them. For too long, the sorcerers of the Ocean City had ignored the plight of mortals in the far lands. Not just monsters, but well workers had come to rule certain places with fear. The bitter seeds they had planted had grown into towering weeds of hatred. Mortals had been promised to demons and hollows of primal power had been poisoned. Barbarian mages resorted to human sacrifices to fuel their spells, ensuring that the world the others found when they finally left Atlantis was nearly beyond redemption. Shadow Diplomacy The early mages did not adapt well to their exile. In some cases, they expected to be worshipped as gods, or at least great leaders. But the abyss ensured the failure of these dreams, lashing mages with harsh, mystical punishments for their hubris. Anomalous events later called paradoxes. The mystic thread of the supernal world could not be woven into the fallen world without risk of rupturing the pattern. What's more, barbarian mages built, vied with Atlantean exiles for hollows in places of powerful resonance. These mages hated the Atlanteans, blaming them for the abyss. Driven underground like all sorcerers, their cults died out or were subsumed by the Atlantean orders, but not after many magical battles for supremacy or revenge. It has been from their place in the shadows then that the enlightened have affected the world. Mages have claimed for themselves many of the most remarkable innovations of history. The truth of these claims is nearly impossible to disentangle from the boasts made about them. For mages are a secretive lot, hoarding the truth. If they are quick to speak and tutor on a topic, then surely that topic is shallow and unimportant. They save the best material for initiates alone. Many like to claim that the effort of the awakened have been in mankind's best interest. That they have been noble martyrs searching it out occult secrets that might aid humanity and reunite the world. Unfortunately, overwhelming evidence runs counter to this claim. More often than not, mages have used their power to control others and play them as pawns in a vast contest for territory and might. The Atlantean exiles refused to accept their rejection from the heavens, and so sought to find a path whereby they could ascend to its reaches once again. They broke off pieces of their own soul and charged them with the power to touch the realm's supernal, allowing mages to overcome the lash of the abyss in certain areas. Soon, all mages sought to establish domain of their own. The legends of wizards' towers, sacred groves, and cavernous shrines speak of these early magical sites. It was said that the mage who could solve the most magical secrets established the best domains. 
and wield the mightiest magic would gain the final key and ascend to the throne of creation. Humans would once more shake off the clay that bound them and become as gods. Today, magic does not sit comfortably in the modern world. The majority of the world's citizens would rather the not have magic exist at all. Unless, of course, it were placed firmly in their hands. In which case, they would find it the most precious phenomenon known to man. The secret nature of magic cuts the awakening off from the from one another, turning it into a furtive, shameful practice. Far from the glory it held in ages past, mages have argued over their modern dilemma. The abyss grows wider, and fewer and fewer sleepings. sleepers now awaken. What are mages to do? Revealing the mystery to the initiated is not an option, while initiating only those who prove their metal threatens to call the numbers of new recruits. There are two responses to this dilemma that have gained many converts in recent years. The first is the path of ascension. In the tale of Atlantis, the Exarch seized the heavens and now control the universe from their unseen thrones. The oracles, those Atlanteans who originally opposed the Exarchs, also exist in the higher realms, ready to aid those who strive once more for the heavens. This cause is supported by the magical orders who have kept the stories of Atlantis alive throughout the ages of darkness. Just how mages are supposed to go about overthrowing an unseen celestial foe is a matter for intense debate among the orders, but almost all agree that the place to start is through opposing the Exarchs. Puppets. The seers of the throne and order of mages dedicated to serving the will of the Exarchs. They are labeled betrayers and tyrants by the Atlantean orders. This was brought to you by Franklin County Internet Gaming Society on YouTube and Facebook, Roger Hansen on Patreon, and Gaming with Infamous on Discord. Thanks for stopping by. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Inker. Breaker. Overcast. Pocket Casts. Radio Public. Spotify. Support us on Patreon. And check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the video description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.